good morning and happy Valentine's Day for the 16 countries that celebrated around the world and welcome to day two of racing right here on the first full round of the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Grand Prix of Kuwait City. Love is in the air. Love of racing that is. Which by the way is good news because today is going to be a packed schedule of racing. Check this out what we are dealing with on uh, this Friday. We start it with 11 o'clock. We are going into Moto 1 for the women's division and Moto 1 for the ski division, followed by free practice on runabout and freestyle. And then don't go too far from the seats because promptly at 2 p.m. this afternoon, we're going into Moto 2 for ski ladies GP1 and ski division for the men. And then we're going to start off Moto 1 for runabout GP1 this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And then freestyle is going to hit us. But wait, there's more. We even have a uh, parallel slalom this evening. That's going to start at uh, 6 o'clock, and we don't know if yet if that's going to go live. Hopefully, we'll be able to bring that to you. But uh, 6 to 8, hopefully, you'll be able to be a part of that action. Kuwait City will be able to enjoy some parallel side-by-side, head-to-head challenge, parallel slalom, 6 p.m., followed by a really cool freestyle show. Well, that gives you the lineup of what's happening today. It's going to be busy for us, and as you can see, we are not waiting around. We just got through with the parade lap for the ladies, and the ladies are going to be up. Moto number one, let's talk about this lineup. On that inside split, we have got Eminelli Ortendahl on the pole position, your fastest qualifying time yesterday of a 13797. Right next to her, Krista Uzar, who pulled out a little Cinderella story on the last lap yesterday in the qualifying. She was down in uh, fourth and then moved up into second place, and that puts her second on the pole on the inside split. Right next to her, Jana Borgstrom, the little phenom that tore it up last year at Sharjah with her fix, first Grand Prix win. And let's see what happens on this first moto. You can also see Yasmin Eprouse lined up on the inside. The pole position on the outside, well, that's going to be Estelle Pere on boat number 96. There's a recap and a bit of what's happening up on the water. Cool shot of the beach. We are going to be doing a beach start this weekend versus the typical starts that you've been seeing, which is the uh, running starts. Now, I needed to share a little bit of a change here. I talked yesterday about the top five. So if you qualified in that top five yesterday with the top five fastest times, then you had the opportunity to go to the green buoy in that running start. But with this beach start, really what that gives you the opportunity is pick where you're going to be, whether it's on the inside split or the outside split, you can see the uh, of the top five fastest girls, all of them except Estelle Pere, lined up on the inside. Catching up with some of the riders, they felt that the outside split was a smidge faster yesterday. But we've got pretty quiet conditions out in the bay. You're watching the race action here at the Grand Prix of Kuwait, brought to you by UIM and APB, and that. Uh, Salmia Bay, very flat water conditions, a little bit warmer, expecting it to be upwards of 70 degrees today. Massive change from two days ago when these guys woke up to five degrees. Burr. Course marshals uh, getting ready. I see Kevin Redder down there uh, holding for Jonna Borgstrom. Perfect time to talk about the helmets. If you get a look out on the outside split, you'll notice a brand new helmet being sported by Sophie Borgstrom. And on the back of that helmet, that custom paint job is a whole bunch of minions. Oh, good start for Eminelli Ortendahl, but I gotta say Krista Uzar had a quick one and it looks like it is gonna be a battle between a Krista, but it turns out Jana Borgstrom Pulls the whole shot on the inside. Jana, 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 you little superstar. She also has a brand new helmet. It's got butterflies all over it. That's got to be a present after uh, the great year both of these ladies had. Both Sophie Borkstrom, her sister, and Jana had their best years in 2019. And what a way to fire off your first moto of the year with a whole shot. Going to be Yasmin Eprouse in second. Kylie Elmers in third. Chris Uzar with the line is going to be pushing to get into that third place spot. Kylie Elmers shuts the door on the final turn. And that's going to put Chris Uzar in fourth. Jessica Chuvon in fifth. And 
Eminelli Ortendahl back in six, going to play the shark. Dun -dun, dun -dun. You're defending world champion in sixth place. That's what your start looks like. And you can see a massive course. These guys dealing with 1.8 kilometers. We talked about it yesterday, 31 buoys. It's not so much the length of the course. It's not even the number of buoys. But I have to say big kudos to Marco Petrini, our race director for the course design. Laid out in portrait style. It's deep back into the bay. Got a ton of technical areas that these guys can work. And uh, get the opportunity to take a look at Jonna Borkstrom as she comes off of that final double off the back stretch and then they've got a series of quick turns another double two singles a double yeah uh, double white and then she has the opportunity to pick whether she's going to go to the inside or outside let's see what jonna does outside split for jonna borkstrom and it looks like yasmin e prowse going to follow her Surf not going to have too much of an impact yet this morning. I will tell you the tides are intense here as they were in China. We visited last year in October and a three meter differentiation between the water levels. And you can see how far down the beach these guys are having to uh, stage these skis. Lap number one, let's check some times. One, four, three, four, six for John Borgstrom on lap one. Yasmin E. Prouse with a one, four, four, five, seven. And Krista Uzar with a 14876. And Krista Uzar, right out of that split section, took over third place. Kylie Elmers now got company as Emily Ortendahl moving from sixth up into fourth, and she, or excuse me, fifth, and she's hunting Kylie. Young lady originally born in New Zealand, rides for Australia. Also has uh, ridden for the Russia division as well. And what an incredible racer she is. She's also going to be doing double duty today, and she's not the only one. She'll be racing in the runabout division as well as skis, and so will uh, Oliver Hansen, and that's his first year joining the uh, pro ski. So we got multiple riders out here tackling two different genres during the same day. Eminelli Ortendahl, your defending world champion, prowling back there in fifth place. Manelli on that lap, actually with the 15051. Got a fresh in engine underneath that QB1 hood. She's got a big announcement that will be hitting us hopefully within the next month. I can't tell you what it is yet, so that's your teaser, though. You'll hear all about it uh, right here. Hopefully in March, we'll get the opportunity to tell you about the uh, big announcement for Eminelli or Dahl. As if she hasn't had enough big announcements, your first uh, young lady having the opportunity to ride for Team Abu Dhabi, and this is her first race to represent for this brand new uh, incredible opportunity with the great team. If that sounds familiar, it's because Rashid El Mullah also riding for Team Abu Dhabi. Here's Krista Uzar. Eminelli and Ken Kylie Elmer side by side. Eminelli snuck the inside, had the line. That was actually Jessica Siobhan pushing around Kylie. Jessica is suffering from a pretty nasty illness. She's supposed to be diagnosed when she gets back, had to go to the doctor right before she showed up. Eminelli had already gotten around out of the split section. Now Jessica Siobhan taking over. So Elmer's in sixth, Siobhan in fifth, and Miss Ortendahl up in fourth place. Chris are still third. Yasmin E. Prowse in second, and Borkstrom, let's take a look at her time. Her current was 14569. So that first lap was a rocket ship, 14346. Yasmin E. Prowse right there with the 14388. There's a full picture of Jessica Siobhan, who just made a great pass out of the front stretch right into that. Big double turn. It's a nasty technical turn. It's actually a triple on the far left hand side of that track. It's right by one of the sea walls. And it gets a lot of action from that uh, wall with the waves pushing back. There's a beautiful opportunity to watch Jonna Borgstrom working the inside. I love how she's worked both of those splits in these laps today, giving herself a chance to get a good rhythm. And she is opening up a nice gap between herself 
and the rest of this pack. John Aborchel, 14477 on that last lap. And it is uh, Yasmin Eprouse with the 15037. 6.88 seconds separating John Aborchel from uh, Yasmin Eprouse. Cool drone footage as we get an opportunity to watch these guys coming out of the split section and beginning that merge. Now you can see those merge buoys just off in the uh, distance as they come through. Typical rules, as I'm sure you're aware, they've got to stay on the correct side of those merge buoys. It is only after the merge buoys that they're allowed to uh, cross over on the lanes. But coming out of those splits, they are required to stay on the right side of those merge buoys. So if I'm coming from the inside, my boat has got to be to the left of that merge. John of Orkstrom on the right side, and you can see that was the final part of the front, or excuse me, back stretch where the double buoy is. And then they've got a double, double, single, single, double before they even get to the split section. Again, pretty technical track, lots and lots and lots of turns. I heard some feedback that the split section was so tight, it was a bit hard to make passing on the split section, but where they were able to get some pretty wicked passes was right before that split section and also right after the split section coming onto the front stretch. You've already seen that demonstrated both on the uh, area right before the splits and also right on this front stretch. And there's Jana as she comes through. And you can see those big cans indicating the uh, checker flag. One, four, three, four, six, still her best time. Slid just a little bit of one, four, six, five, eight on this last lap. Yasmin Eprouse picking it up. 144, and she's reduced the gap to a 4.30 difference between her and John of Orkstrom. There's Krista Uzar with a 14597. She, too, a little faster on that lap than uh, John. 894 off the leader. She's 8.94 uh, seconds off of the leader's time. Krista Uzar, your Latvian world champion in 2018. After the accident, we weren't able to see her race or until China of last year. She looked a bit tentative in that race. You can tell just getting her sea legs back. Had to get used to dealing with uh, a weaker leg. She said she'd been training as intensely as she could, but between China and now, you could tell a marked difference. She was better in Sharjah. Still probably not the Krista that I was used to seeing, but I feel watching her yesterday in qualifying, I'm starting to see that attack mode. She's much more aggressive, but she's also really calm on the boat. And I think that despite the fact that that injury was horrific in every way, I think in some ways gonna make her a stronger rider. Krista Uzar, as you see off in the uh, background there, and Yasmin Eprouse going to the inside, chose to follow Jana Borkstrom through that inside split. Nice turn for Yasmin Eprouse. This little rocket ship, she's explosive, exciting to watch. She, of all the riders, has one of the more aggressive power bands on that boat. It works very well for her, as you saw last year in Sharjah, almost had the whole shot. She's had the whole shot in uh, the, uh, some of those motos, but what happens is it, that boat is wears her down after uh, 15 minute motos, but she is just continuing to get stronger and stronger. And I have to say, she's going to be a lady that we're going to be seeing great things from. Yasmin Eprouse, 64. And again, John Borks from boat 25, your race leader. Take a look at the time. Time dropping again. 3.98 is the separation between John Borks from and Yasmin Eprouse. Krista Uzar. And interesting, all three riders in the 14778. Water's getting churned up a little bit more. We're 10 minutes and uh, 26 seconds into this 15 minute plus one lap moto. So 14778 for Jonna Borgstrom and a 14746 for Yasmin Ekros, 3.987 seconds separating. and I've noticed her writing style is starting to be the Krista that we remember as well. Switching legs, she looks very strong on both of those legs. And 
with a uh, multiple fracture on her ankle. Right ankle, by the way, which is an anchor uh, that you would put back over that right plate when you are positioning the boat. A lot of times we'll use our left foot forward quite a bit. We're typically on left-hand courses today. It's not a left-hand course. Looking at a right-hand course for the uh, UIM ABP Grand, Alpha Bike Grand Prix of Kuwait. And Eminelli Yorkdahl in fourth place. Her time, a 1-4-5-2-2. Of the four riders uh, that just came through, five riders, She's actually got the fastest time with that 1.4522. She's reduced her time behind the leader to 11.09 seconds. Eminelli Ortendahl getting her groove on. Your defending world champion. Incredible year for her, her best second moto. Got a second in moto three in Sharjah. Best finish was third, Grand Prix of Sharjah, first podium. record last year, best all motos pretty much, with the exception of one moto, Moto3 in Sharjah. She got second, being seventh, because she had to uh, go to a backup boat. Other than that, she was untouchable in 2019, and she looked stellar yesterday in qualifying. Donna Borgstrom with so much confidence, has trained very hard last year. She went on a, a local series of races with uh, Janina Johansson, Sophie, and with Eminelli, and I think between all of the training and the focus, Donna Borgstrom is gonna be a big force to be reckoned with in this ski class. And Yasmin Eprouse going down briefly on the front stretch. Just enough for Eminelli to uh, scoot by she got around Krista Uzar out of the split section, and now she is uh, in second. And Krista Uzar trying to take advantage of that loss of momentum from Yasmin E. Prouse. Both of these riders on the left-hand side of the track after that front stretch. There's a double, triple, the double that they have to negotiate before they get to the front stretch. That's the triple. that double red and you can see it's off canner as well. Then they'll go back and pick up the double. Yellow and white buoy and they have a straight shot unlike the runabout class. They've got a straight shot from here to the right hand side of this track and uh, that straight shot is interesting because it's actually against the green if you will. It's against the surf. The surf's going to be coming in. Waves are going to be coming in a bit catty corner to how that looks today. Wind coming in from the knee. Uh, excuse me, coming in from the north. Pretty view with the split section. And you are watching uh, Jonna Borgstrom as she comes through, and that is a lap rider that she is working around. Lap rider, nice enough to take a quick look back. Make sure that she dropped out of the way. Let's check her times. Jonna Borgstrom on that one with a 14920. Eminelli Ortendahl with a 14316. 3.94 seconds, and all that happened in the last lap. She went from 1104 behind to 3.94 behind. You can see Jonna Borgstrom on the uh, background there. That's the back stretch that she's working. Watch how that boat pops out of the water. She's got to pay a lot of attention to how those waves are coming through on her boat. She looks so comfortable on that ride. Look how quickly Eminella Nortendahl took the turn, though. Impressive riding from both ladies. Let's see what Jonna does. 
She took the outside split on that last lap, but she's got some pressure from Eminelli Orton Dahl. Will she protect the inside or will she take a risk and run to that outside split again? Outside it is. Emma went outside and a Jonna turned inside. Lapped rider from the outside split and it is gonna be a nice move. Jonna Borgstrom protects the lead on this lap. And she opened up the guns. One, four, five, three, oh, for Jonna Borgstrom on uh, lap 10. 16, four, two, that means we've got a white flag for Jonna Borgstrom. Will she take another win after that incredible uh, finish last year in Sharjah? Jonna Borgstrom needs to hold off Eminelli Orton-Dahl for one more. It was 3.98 separating them on the last lap. And Eminelli Orton-Dahl closed the gap on her on this one. 3.13 on this last one as they make their run back towards that back stretch. Now remember, got a several technical turns here they got to deal with. There's the double. She's still got to hold and protect that triple. Here comes her shot at the back stretch. Cuts it tight, opens up the gas. That's Jonna Borgstrom you're watching with that three second gap between her and Eminelli Orton Dahl. And an opportunity for this young lady to take yet another win. And what an incredible confidence booster this would be for her. Mind you, Jonna was the young lady that had that multiple break on her arm in 2017. She was out of commission for quite some time. Had no feeling or very little feeling in her arm because of the nerve damage. They weren't sure that it was going to come back. But man, with the intense rehab and the focus this girl has had, it has been insane to watch this march back up to the podium this last year. And you can see everybody getting fired up. She is looking to go to that inside split. Let's see if she does it. She does have lap traffic. Eminelli Orton Dahl went to the outside, lap traffic in between. Not going to affect her? Let's see. It's going to be very, very close. She managed to hold on to it. Just stumbled slightly and still took the win. Fantastic job for John of Borgstrom. Oh, my goodness. That was beautiful. Eminelli Orton Dahl up there giving her a big hug. These guys ride together and hang out together. Great, great win for uh, Jonna Borgstrom in that cool new design helmet that she's got. We'll have to get a shot of that later. It's got custom butterflies all over it. Eminelli, of course, with the tennis ball helmet, which is fantastic. You can't miss her anywhere on the course. All right, your top two ladies that last time, by the way, just if you're interested on the lap, 14786 for Jonna Borgstrom on that lap, and Eminelli Ortendahl blistered it with a 14588. Yasmin E. Prowse and um, Krista Uzar. Third and fourth, Yasmin with a 14931 on that last lap. And Krista Uzar with a 14963. Been too much fun to watch. We've really got a hand at Jessica Siobhan right up there in fifth with a 14899. I know she hasn't been feeling very good, but still kept the gas on. Great run for her. It's going to be a Stell Parade in six, 15271. Sophie Borgstrom in seventh with a 14593. Lisa Kassan, Vitalia in eighth. Joanna Grasa in ninth. Molly Fern in tenth. Janina Johansson in 11th, Kylie Elmers in 12th, Virginia Morales round out in your field. <laughs> and you can see the reactions from uh, Team Abu Dhabi, her brand new supporters this year for Eminelli Orton Dahl as they get that QB boat out of the water. And Quinton has got to be very happy with that, uh, with that run. Got a lot of people chiming in on the live feed, just say, Hi quickly to uh, Ricard Fuchs and Vail Simonchi, Nathan Adlam, Aziz Rahman. Good morning to all of you. Duarte Beha, Valentin Zarif, E.P. Prowsko, Marcin Kubiak, Jack Wells. Say, come on, Molly. Freddy Johor. Hey, George. Good to see you, bud. Diogo Barbosa is on. Harley Ritchie. Oh, 
Yeah, no kidding. Benjamin uh, Francois say be sure and bring Hawkins some uh, oxygen. We will do that. Dawid Makula, good luck to everybody. Nathan Adlin saying uh, good luck to everybody as well. Andre Lynn, good to have you here. Oh, thank you. Say I will say a beautiful day and good luck to Jay. <laughs> Julietta Brandau, great for Joanna. No kidding. What a fantastic uh, first moto and really does set the tone for the day, I think. We're going to start with the Parade of Nations for the men's ski. Don't go away. Did a change on the time, by the way. Started last year. They're going to 17-minute motos plus one lap for the uh, men's ski class. That'll be coming at you next. Right now we've got the parade happening. 22 nations and 62 riders represented this weekend. Again, these guys getting quickly prepped before they do the parade lap. Now, the parade lap serves two functions. For us, it is the opportunity to see the different nations represented and for the riders to prairie, uh, proudly carry those flags that they are representing this weekend. It also gives them a chance to take a look at the start. So they actually work their way through that start grid. And if you can see right in the left-hand corner, this is going to be for me and me, the right-hand corner, actually, there's a big can, big red can buoy. That is situated right out in front of both the inside and outside split. Now, the can buoy is an indicator on this beach start. You must hold your line until you get to that red can buoy. At that point, you can start merging. So again, we'll show you once they get to the start. Andrea Guidi getting ready, carrying his flag for Italy. Slava Nabancic for Croatia. Croatia. Just to give an indication of how fast these girls are, Emma Nelly Orton Dolls run yesterday. Her fastest lap time was a one three seven nine seven. Kevin Redner's a one three five nine one. Very close. Kevin, of course, taking the fastest lap time yesterday. It was Ulrich Bernson in that uh, Q1 that got second place. Stian Schvetlein in third with a one three eight nine seven. Listen to the times between Ulrich and uh, Stian is riding made from Norway. 13863 was Ulrich's time in Q1. 13897 was Stian's time. That was the difference between second and third in pole one. Now pole two, well it got a little faster for Kevin Redner. I said it was 137 for Eminelli. Well in Q2, Kevin's fastest time was 13391. And in that uh, pole position yesterday in the second qualifier, which is where we get to differentiate the top 10 riders. Barnabas Zabo had a 13798, good enough to put him in second. Let's take a look and see where these guys are down on the line. It's gonna be uh, Kevin Redder on the inside, pole position. Barnabas Zabo in, uh, right next to him. Stian in third on the inside. Alex Courtois in fourth on the inside. Salman Alawadi. Gonna be yeah, fourth on the inside. Let's take a look at the outside pole position. Just taking a look uh, down there. Okay. 
Ulrich Bernson going to be on the uh, outside. And he will have that pole position on the outside. like uh, Matt Hansen also going to be on that outside. So Ulrich Bernson going to have the pole position on the outside split. Kevin Redder with the pole position on the inside. I believe Michael Perret is actually lined up on that outside as well. And you can see these guys warming up as they get uh, ready to go. We did our elections today in Barnabas Zabo, by the way, on that uh, 28 machine is going to be our new riders rep for 2020. Congratulations to him. Good morning, Jean Navarro. Ah, Gabriel Caviana saying go Andrea Guidi, boat number 26. Last year was his first year on uh, this full year on this UIM tour. Great having back. Yosef. Uh, Bohislav, cheering on Barnabas Zabo and Gabor Zabo. Maurizio saying good luck, Andrea Guidi. A lot of support for Guidi on the feed today. <laughs> yes, I'm getting some pretty funny uh, comments. One of them was that everybody on the beach has these big hoodies and hats, except for Team Poland, who uh, just running around down there and shorts and short sleeves so you can tell who's used to the cold weather <laughs> that was fantastic all right our parade of nations begins you're about getting ready to watch minsky gp moto number one 17 minutes plus a lap some of the riders were talking about that outside split being a bit faster yesterday and i wonder if they were uh, thinking that they might want to line up on that outside for the whole shot. But I think after watching women ski, everybody's like, yep, that inside's looking good, I'll go there. Kevin Redder taking that prime position on the uh, pole on the inside. And you can see Dan Anderson, who was in qualifying yesterday, unfortunately uh, had a couple of laps canceled out for missing a buoy. So uh, that put him out of that top grid. And you can see the course marshal uh, directing these guys. Now they're just going to do the start. So it's our one opportunity really for them to see that start. And you've got a chance to look out over the front here. And do you see that red buoy up uh, just ahead of the two white uh, checker flag buoys? That red buoy actually is the one that's indicating the inside split. And I have to be, if I'm racing on that inside, I have to have that red buoy on the right side of my ski. And I am not allowed to uh, change lanes until I get past that red buoy. So you can see those off in the distance as we get ready to go. That's Axel Courtois as he comes back in and Stian Schwedlein. Now, yesterday, Stian had the Golden Boy outfit on from a Jet Tribe, but I noticed he went all black. I love the fact that these guys uh, have so many wetsuits to choose from. Sort of like James Bushel, who uh, has his own container for wetsuits. Just kidding. But he does have a lot. Hey, JJ Perret saying hello, everybody. You should be here. Jeremy, you should be here. And 
little quick chance to look down the line. As we get ready to go, that is your outside lineup. pole position. That's actually Michael Pere on the pole on the outside. That's going to be Michael Pere. And Ulrich Bernson is going to be third on that. And Andrea Quidi. Good show. Good start on the outside. And actually, Stian's fat line had a spectacular start on the inside split. And he's just going to come right on over there and shut the door. Stian's fat line with a whole shot on the inside. Great run for this gentleman from Norway. Let's see what's shaking on that outside split. Oh, oh, one of the Pere brothers lining it up on the outside. Beautiful turn from Stian Schvetline as he pops onto the front stretch. Hole shot. Going to go to the gentleman that's uh, riding that commander boat, all put together by Go Fast Chris. And it is looking insanely quick. Mr. Torello working on that boat. Kevin Rever in second. Andrea Guidi with that great start in third. And uh, Michael Pere in fourth. Ulrich Bernson in fifth, Axel Courtois in sixth. Battle for seventh, but uh, it's Solman Alawadi that got the better half of that, and he is in uh, seventh. Great run for him as well. He was lined up on the outside too. Those splits look very, very quick. Guidi goes down, and that was uh, just enough For boat number eight to come through, that's uh, Oliver Hansen, who's riding in two divisions this year. His first year in pro ski. Of course, you got Mad Hansen in your uh, runabout class. Seventeen minutes plus one lap. We're two minutes into this, and Redderer working it on this inside split, and he is going to be very close. Fantastic momentum as he comes out of it. It's a drag race. Kevin Redderer with just enough pulls in the lead on that inside split and a nice pass. D.H. Vetline going to keep wide and see if he can't pick him up on the sweep. Not able to do it, and shuts the door on that as uh, Kevin Redderer takes over as your new leader in photo number one for the Mitch GP class. Barnabas Zabo, third. So from fifth to third for Barnabas. Just out of that start, he had a good start on the uh, outside. Well played. Second fastest qualifying time yesterday in uh, Q2. Barnabas Sabo on fire. He had a real solid shot at the uh, podium last year in Sharjah. Had a couple of tough breaks and unable to, to turn it in, but man. All right, let's take a look and see where uh, Kevin's going to line up here after he comes through those. He's going to the inside split again. And that is a big, you got to really come back into the middle of that course to uh, pick up the inside split. Kevin Redmer riding that victory boat. And a fast, fast qualifying time yesterday, but 13391, and he is lining it up. They have not done much to uh, that engine. They freshened it up, but they're still running the same engine that they had in uh, Sharjah. And he said it was a bit slow off of the start, and uh, it certainly was. <laughs> he had to do quite a bit of make good. You got Ulrich Bernson. 
challenging and then goes down. Ulrich Birdson having a great run from the inside split. And then his boat just uh, went down, looked like he pulled his lanyard, waited for the other two riders to come by. As soon as he had clearance, he was back up again. Actually, Bernson uh, had a uh, stop and go. We'll talk a little bit about those. If you get called for uh, jumping the start, or if you get called for um, not holding your line, on the jumping of the start, you get a 20 second call to the beach. You can choose to take that if you, uh, you can choose whether you want to take it or not, but in 20 seconds, if you don't take it, the penalty is assessed and then you have to go and protest the penalty. If you do take the 20 second, they bring you in just before that uh, finish line and they put you down for that 20 seconds and then you're able to go back out on the course. I believe that is what uh, we were witnessing there. Back to the track, Kevin Redder in side split. Take a look at the lap time, 139.12. On that last lap, first one was a 134, or best lap was a 134.72. Boat number three, that is Abdullah Alamani. Abdullah back in eighth on that uh, last lap, and he is working the outside split. back in eighth. Alamani got around him. He's in seventh. Zabo in third. Michael Pere in fourth. Axel, Axel Courtois in fifth. Nacho Armias in sixth. Abdul Alamani in seventh. Burns in eighth. And Anderson in tenth. You can see uh, Barnabas Zabo at the top of that screen as Kevin Redder comes through on that series of doubles before he picks up this inside split yet again. We are on lap number four, six, five, three is the amount of time on the clock. 17 minute moto plus a lap. James has two containers. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Nathan Adler poking in on that one. Not to our Mias. On the uh, red and yellow, black, white boat put together this year. It's going to be his first full season in a while. It's great to have him back. Saw him in China last year and then again in Sharjah. And expecting great things uh, from this guy. Axel Courtois. Having a good run as well. He came from that inside split. He's in fifth. Arneas on the outside in sixth. Burns in seven. Abdullah Alamani in eight. What's the distance here? 12.37 seconds between Kevin Redder and Stiech Fatline. boats hooked up, but you can see these waves pushing these boats around right in these two sections before they get into that split. And Barnabas Zabo also dealing with that quick single, single. And that is exactly what I was talking about. He nose stabbed it slightly. Barnabas Zabo right straight through it. No big issues, but it's just an indicator of the type of uh, trouble that they have the opportunity to get into on that right hand side. Looks like Dan Anderson with some problems off the front stretch. And he might be bringing it in. No, he's going to come back out onto the track. So whatever it was, he got it fixed. Anderson back underway. 28. That is Barnabas Zabo. And 
he's going to show you what it looks like off of that uh, triple. That's the first turn out of the front stretch. That seawall that you saw when you were looking at the drone footage is right off to the left of him. So it's a triple, single, single, double on this side as well. There's the straight shot on the back stretch. Time for Kevin Redner on his last lap was a 138.81. His fastest lap time, 134.72. And the distance starts to open up a bit between him and the rest of the field. 15.80 is the separation between uh, him and Stan Schmettlein. You can see the time's up on the board, 138.44. Stan with a great run going. Stan has always been a great racer, but I've got to say this new combination with the uh, top and bottom deck, the hull is a commander hull, but it's really been Jarello uh, from Go Fast that has put together a precise and well handling a combination for Stan Schmettlein. Just gonna cruise through that front stretch. One, three, nine, eight, nine. And there's Michael Perret. Great to have Michael back on this tour. Michael's super fun to watch. He's an aggressive rider. He's not a quiet rider, but I think that's what makes him so exciting. If I had to compare him between him and Jeremy, since Jeremy's on the feed, I'll throw this out. And Jeremy, you know, you give me your thoughts or correct me, but to me, Michael seems to work more real estate on that ski throughout his lap. Like he's in and out of the tray, runs to the back of the boat quite a bit, presses the front of that boat down a lot. I don't know if that's from um, racing the bullet boats, but he just looks like he uses a lot of real estate. You, on the other hand, are a quieter, more finesse rider. Um, but do correct me, I, I want to hear your feedback if you're like, Dawson, that's not true. But between the two of you, I, I feel like you're a quieter rider. Both equally talented. I think Michael Perret is incredibly talented. I just find that your riding styles are a bit different. And interestingly enough, if I were going to compare, I would say Estelle maybe rides, I don't know, it just depends on the wave conditions because I've seen her in big water. She rides more like Michael. She's very aggressive on the boat, which is fun. Really fun to watch her. All right, Kevin Redder, that was enough of my rhetoric. Ha ha, get it? Redder, Redder, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Inside split, Kevin Redder. We are on 12 minutes of the 17 minute moto. 13472 is his best lap. Let's see what he gets. 13966. He's staying right in the 139s. Solid run. Stian Schvetlein, second place. About 15 seconds off this last one. There's Nacho Armias. Nacho, of course, in sixth place. He's got a lot of company out of that split section. So it's Dean and Barnabas. And then Michael Perret, your top four. Axel Courtois, fifth. Armias in sixth. Bernson in seventh. Abdul Alamani eighth, no change on that Andrea Guidi ninth, and Salomon Alamani in ten. There's Nacho Armias and Ulrich Bernson. Oh, Nacho! Look at you trying to come up here and shut the door on that front. Oh man, Bernson having none of it. Peeled his eyelids back coming through that. He got a lot of spray. Bernson never let off the gas. Nacho's still going to try to work some of those lines. But now he's got a little tougher line to work on with these two singles. So right off of that triple turn, it's two singles and then back to a double. And there is a triple turn. Let's see if uh, Nacho can get back up in the tray next to Bernson. Run, no change. 
Brunson still hunting and uh, Stiege fat line second, Barta Basavo first. Those two just came through the uh, front stretch. We are on 14 minutes now. Generally, if you'd watch much of us last year, we'd have one more lap to go and we'd get the white flag. But right now we're running 17 minutes plus a lap. So we've got a couple more laps for these guys. More chance for mistakes as uh, fatigue starts to set in. And don't forget, we've got three motos for the stand-up class. Trudy Schvetline, say it go, Stian. Jeremy, I was hoping Jeremy would chime in. He probably didn't hear that. Hey, Derek Carell, good to have you joining us. Miro Peter saying go, Barney. Barney, uh, Barnabas's nickname. It's Axel Courtois on boat 95, hunting a podium at uh, the charge around. Took a pretty nasty spill. Kevin Redbird on lap number 10. One three four seven two, still his fastest time. Lap time on this one, by the way, one three nine six two for Kevin Redbird. Pulled it back a little bit. Nice steady pace. Cruising through on uh, this first moto. Mind you, not a fresh engine that he is working with. Unlike him and Ellie Ortendahl, they've put a brand new engine in that boat and uh, switched out engines on another boat. So Emma's dad's been incredibly busy this weekend, but uh, Kevin and Chris and those guys, they put some new parts in it. They didn't have a lot of time between these last two rounds to work on the boat. So they will be ready for the next one. But uh, Kevin said this boat's just a bit slow. He sure doesn't look like it as he works his way around lap traffic. You're watching Kevin Redmer on that double. Single double, look how tight those two singles are. And then you got one more double and he's gonna go into the split section. Now he's been running on the inside. Will he take it again on this lap? Yes, and you can see how far back, strong, 90 degree turn. That is a full angle, tricky angle to come back in on this uh, inside split. I can see why these guys had to really contemplate that, but it looks very smooth on the track right now. Kevin taking full advantage of that. And the split section white flag comes out for Kevin Redmond. for three motos that was one of the most epic battles I've ever seen between him and Quentin Bosch. And if you didn't get a chance to watch that, please go back on Facebook and check out that stop from last year at Olbia. Some of the coolest racing between him and QB I've ever seen. Gives me goosebumps just talking about that again. Best finish was the... World champion with a 99-point lead. He had back-to-back -back GP wins. Prior to that, his best was at Olbia in 2018. First overall with a 33-point lead. So we're looking for a hat trick in 2020 for Kevin Redmer. Can he pull off three world championships in a row? And that looks like uh, Dan Anderson under the tow hook. Tough break. Literally. For the gentleman that had such a great year last year. Up best year ever. Uh, second in Motos 1 and 3 in Port of Mal. Ended up second overall on the world championship tour. Dan Anderson had an incredible year last year. Not a good way to start it off. Hopefully he'll be able to get that boat fixed and back out on the water for motor number two. Meek, speaking of two, that is Stan Schvetline coming through. 
and checkered flag for him. Kevin Redward taking the win. Stiech Fett line for second, and it is going to be Barnabas Szabo rounding out your top three. So again, Kevin Redward made that look just way too easy. He just snuck through on that last lap. Kevin Redward takes the win. Stiech Fett line for second. 13472, the fastest lap time. His current on that last lap was a 13735. By the way, they did 12 laps. And top three, Stian, or excuse me, Kevin, Stian, and uh, Barnabas. Well, that's going to conclude moto number one. Where we're going to go from here is uh, free practice for the runabout class. And then we're going to be going into a free practice for freestyle as well. All right, you guys, I think that's going to that's going to do it for us for just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do this free practice for the runabout and the freestyle. And uh, we will be coming back live to you at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Don't go anywhere. This gives you an opportunity here to watch uh, Kevin Redward get the congratulations from everybody and way to carry that flag through again for the victory team. But uh, that's the final of moto number one. It's got to be the fastest announcing gig ever. And then, but, but wait, there's more. We will be back at 2. So set your clocks. 2 o'clock, we're going to be going into moto number two for both the women and the men. And then we'll be doing the very first moto for the runabout class. You've been watching all the action right here for the UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship Tour, the season opener, the Grand Prix of Kuwait. I'll see you at 2 p.m.